Hey, 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 happy day, Sharon Horn Olsen here, also known as the Pajama Grandma, in my Pajama Grandma robe, because I like to be in my pajamas. I like to be comfortable. That's kind of interesting. Today, though, I want to talk about adapting, being adaptive. Uh, I find that I have to do a lot of adaptation to everything that I do in my life. Um, some people are faced with more challenges than others. In life and I think that's just maybe it's our destiny I don't know maybe it's our choices that lead to different challenges who knows I'm not gonna talk about the philosophy of that today I just want to talk about our ability to adapt and change and go with the flow of things that happen and then choose how we want that flow to continue to go because I find that when things change and they're changing all the time change is inevitable there's nothing I or anyone else can do to stop the tides of change it's it's impossible so we can anticipate those changes we can create those changes a lot of times I like to be the the change creator I like to be the one that is in charge of the change because if I'm managing the change it's really easy to adapt to it right if I'm choosing the change you know they say that some of the most stressful times in our life are those times of change in our life you know when we get involved in relationships when we have breakups when we get married when we get divorced when we have kids when our kids go to college when we change jobs when we change hairstyles when we change anything those even if they're good changes we find them very stressful I don't understand why because I believe that if I am choosing the change that is good stress positive stress I think it's called you stress EU and then stress versus de-stress de-stress is something that's negative and stresses us in a, a bad way you stress is something that stresses us and challenges us in a good way I believe that if I am personally choosing the change and making the change and making a decision based on a change that's how I stay in control that is how I keep stress feeling like you stress good stress positive stress that moves my life forward versus de-stress and things that are outside of my control and we can impact that by the things that we pay attention to the things we focus on now of course that's easier said than done you're like I can hear you rolling your eyes already right I can hear you rolling your eyes that's pretty funny but I can I mean I say things like that to my kids and, and they do they actually roll their eyes in front of me they're like yeah mom we know and I know they know but I know too but it doesn't mean I always behave that way but I do make a concerted effort nowadays to be the chooser of the changes that happen in my life be the the deciding factor because that gives me control and if I'm in control I'm not freaking out and stressed out and worried about and reacting and there is so much power in being proactive versus being reactive there is so much power in choosing the direction of our lives versus just going with the flow of whatever happens to show up or how how everything else outside of us can impact us and slap us around because as much as I believe the universe is here to support us I believe the universe is there to support us and here to support us when we choose and make preferences and decide for ourselves what direction we want to go if we're just going through the motions of our life life will slap us around because we're always just reacting to what happens so I encourage you just like I'm encouraging myself today to be adaptive be flexible be willing and open-minded enough to Go with the flow when you need to go with the flow, but as you're going with the flow, make sure that you're in control of the choices and the reaction. You're always in control of your reaction to everything, by the way. That's a biggie. That gives you power in any situation, no matter how good or how bad, you get to choose how you're going to react to it. That's like the ultimate personal power, at least for me. You know, bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to all of us sometime. Good things happen to us too, but it seems like the bad ones have a bigger impact. And we just have to adapt and figure out how to go with them and how to roll with them. Um, so from a personal standpoint, I am having lots of vision challenges. I have for, gosh, for 30 some years, for most of my life, I've been blind in one eye and I've lost the vision in my other eye. So it's kind of sucky, but I still seem to adapt and roll with it and figure it out. Now, will I need more help as I'm going forward? Absolutely. I definitely need somebody that can do my um, typing and my editing and my, you know, spell checking, correcting and texting and messaging that way. It's why I adapt by using tools like Voxer. 
If you've never heard of Voxer, it is a walkie-talkie tool on our cell phones. It's free originally, and then if you want to upgrade, you can upgrade, but you can use it for free, and it's a walkie-talkie way. So I can use that to talk with my coaching students. I can use it to talk with my kids if I want. I can use it to do quick responding. You know, most people nowadays can just grab their phone and text. Well, I happen to have a visual challenge that I can't just grab my phone and text. And sometimes I do, which is really embarrassing. You get these weirdly coded messages from me if I try to make an attempt at texting. So Voxer has been a really good way to adapt. It's a way that I can communicate quickly and easily with people because just because my eyes aren't 100% and don't work doesn't mean my brain doesn't, right? So I find ways to learn and adapt. And I suppose I'm going to have to learn Braille. I've put it off for you know, four decades or three, three decades, three and a half decades. But I've always known that at some point I am going to have to learn to use Braille. I'm going to have to use more voice recognition technologies. And there's, there's new, like, I guess my mother-in-law sent me a, or called me and told me she had seen on, I don't know if it was Dr. Phil or something that there's these glasses and they use artificial intelligence or, or an augmented reality and things to actually have a camera that can read everything that's on a screen or a movie or whatever and can then then speak it to you so that you can adapt and figure out how you're going to do what you want to do with what you've got. So what am I working on? Offline to online business. That's what this is really about is me documenting the journey of transitioning from the offline brick and mortar world of businesses in corporate America to the online world and how we can do things online even if we have challenges or limitations or things that would have affected us in the past the power of the internet makes it possible for, for pretty much anybody to create things online automatically and remotely that they never could have created before and that is for people like me a godsend or a miracle or whatever you want to call it it just makes life possible not not necessarily easy because our lives are not easy to begin with but it makes Things possible that we might have thought were impossible before. And to me, that's what miracles are. So what am I working on? The 90 day challenge today is day 34. Again, an opportunity to adapt and change. Whenever I'm doing a challenge, whether it's a five day challenge, a 14 day challenge, a 30 day challenge, 21, whatever the increment is, I start out with a map or a plan of what I think the topics are gonna to be and how I think it's gonna flow. And inevitably, especially on a longer challenge, like a 30 day or a 60 day or a 90 day or 365 day challenge, that what I originally thought changes and morphs based on the people that are going through the challenge and what they need, not on what I need or want to teach, what do they need to get the results and the success they want in the area of whatever the challenge is about. Right now we're doing an influencer live video challenge. I'm doing it with the sexy boss, Heather Ann Havenwood, who is an amazing woman from Texas. Um, I just love her. And she's, she's so outrageous and, and outgoing and amazing. And so what I'm not, you know, so, she's so bold where I am, you know, I'm not shy, but I'm definitely reserved and conservative versus Heather. And so we make a good team. But with the 90 day challenge, I don't know that I have done a single day that I had originally planned out in my 90 day challenge. You know, I, I mapped out a, a strategy and the way I wanted to go about and the topics and everything for the 90 days. And I don't think of 34 days, there's been one day that matched what I originally planned out or strategized. And that's okay because we wanna be flexible. We wanna flow. We wanna adapt with what makes the most sense. We don't wanna get locked into our idea of this is what's right and this is how it has to be. I've gotten a, a big dose of authoritarian management style lately with some people and I just I can't believe that that is still around today I mean I remember learning about it in college seeing it in corporate America still but it was on its way out 35 years ago so when I run up against it and I see it in in people managing other people today I just shake my head and I'm like oh my god I can't even believe and, and it upsets other people but I just kind of sit back and I smile and laugh at it I'm like you know, how long do you think that's going to work out for you? It's not gonna, but that's okay. It's not my problem. It's not my road to hoe. It's not my business to create that change. Everybody, you know, as much as we want to affect change and help other people to adapt and change, each of us comes to the desire to change on our own time frame. We 
It's the same with motivation. We like to think that we can motivate and, and make people and push them to do things, especially people we love and care about, right? But we absolutely positively cannot. It's like pushing a rope. How easy is it to push a rope? You know, a wimpy, flexible rope? You can't push a rope, right? Just, and I don't believe in the word can't. So it's very rare that I say the word can't, but it is impossible to think for someone else. It is impossible to feel for someone else, you know, inside their body is what I'm talking about. It is impossible to get people to change and abandon their beliefs unless they're ready. We each decide and do and choose in our own time and when the time is right for us. And it's not for anyone else to decide when the time is right for me or when the time is right for you. It's for only you to decide. So that's a, another way of adapting and knowing. But it it, it helps if we're open-minded and we're looking for change and ways to make our life better and easier, right? I mean, I think it does. So we're, we have to adapt. So I'm totally adapting with the 90-day challenge, the 90-day influencer live video challenge. And my topic today, I think I'm going to go back and talk about markets and um, the importance of picking the right market for you when you're communicating with people in a specific market. I think that's what we're going to talk about today because I'm... I would have to go back through the days and I think I'll do that and see. I don't think, that was one of the things we were going to talk about in the beginning and I know that I didn't get to it. We got off track based on what people wanted to cover first and now I want to circle back around to some of the topics and some of the things that I know that it's imperative that we cover in the 90 day challenge and, and get the information in there. And again, if we do this again, which I'm sure I will for sure do it again because I love challenges, I'm not sure if Heather will, but I know I will. Um, we might rearrange and we might reorder things, but all of the content that's critical will be there for the people that want to become influencers in days instead of years. Uh, so I'm working on the 90 day challenge, day 34 today. Uh, what else have I got going? My beautiful four year old granddaughter will be driving up any minute. Well, she'll be riding in her car seat. One of her parents will be bringing her. I'm going to hang out with her today because I do that every day. Again, I've had to adapt and figure out how do I do what it is that I do online while, not while actually, because I learned raising my kids and being a workaholic that that is not the best way to be. So when she's with me, she gets my undevoted attention. With For the for 95% of the time, I still 5% of the time will, will have to take a coaching call or we'll have to consult on something or we'll have to do an interview. But I try to set my interviews up nowadays and all of my interviews that I'm either doing or being interviewed for on times outside the time that I'm hanging out with her. Monday through Friday, probably, I don't know what time it even is, probably 7.30 or 7 o'clock, sometimes 5 o'clock, whatever time she shows up till she goes home, 5 or 6 o'clock at night, that is my time that I devote to my granddaughter. I've had to adapt and figure out how... And only in an online business could I do this. Although I did watch her when she was one, but I had to adapt my Italian food manufacturing business. I had I had actually done the four hour work week with my Italian food manufacturing business where I could get done everything I needed to get done to work on that business versus in that business in an hour a day, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. And so that made it possible. And you know, I had teams of people and employees and systems and everything set up is why and I set that up on purpose so that I could be extracting myself from that business and I could be, you know, living my life and doing what I want, when I want, where I want, with whoever I want. And that was back before I wore robes. So I still wore whatever I wanted, but it wasn't bath robes back then or pajamas. But for so for the first year of her life, I did hang out with her and we did do things. And it was really easy because she was a baby. <laughs> and four-year-old or three and four, I've been watching her while she's three and four, is very, very different and needs more attention, and more interaction and more, you know, more one-on-one -on -one time than uh, when she was a baby. So if I weren't doing online things, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would have had to say no. But since I am, it affords me the opportunity to be flexible and change around my schedule and to adapt. And I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> and I'm adapting to <coughs> sneezing during my videos. That's a first. I think I've, I think I've coughed and had the hiccups and messed up my words but I'm not sure that I've I've probably sneezed I'm sure I've had a cold in the last 494 days at some point so that's enough rambling about adapting how adaptive are you how how do you 
change? How do you deal with change? I am a lot better at change now than I was when I was younger. When I was younger, I was not good with change at all. I would push back. I would resist change. I would do anything and everything I could to not change and not make anything different. And I found that being so rigid and inflexible really hurt me in a lot of ways. And over time, when I was ready to adapt and change, I discovered that change was something that I embrace. Take go out and make it an awesome day. I will first be with you tomorrow and let you know what's going on in the transition from the offline brick and mortar world to the online world. Have an absolutely fantastic day. If I can help you in any way, shape, or form, hit me up in the comments below. Find me on social media, Sharon Horn Elstrom, Pajama Grandma. I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm not hiding. I'm out here in plain sight. I would love to hook you up with somebody that can help you if it's not my area of expertise. Or if it is, I would be glad to help you. Take care.